Hello, I'm Thorlac Turville-Peter and I'm Professor of Medieval English Literature at the University of Nottingham. I teach Chaucer, which is uh, uh, extremely popular, but in fact I teach literature from all from the year 800 to 1500. Uh, we have huge numbers of students uh, taking it. In fact, all our students of English take medieval literature. Uh, my own interest is particularly from uh, 1066, the Norman Conquest, up to about 1530. But uh, medieval literature would cover everything from the beginnings of English literature in about seven or 800 uh, up to 1530. Absolutely crucial difference is that it's all in manuscript. Um, the coming of Print culture, uh, right at the end of the Middle Ages, uh, altered everything. Uh, it altered all the uh, forms of distribution and so on, so that uh, instead of a text being laboriously copied out uh, uh, time after time, it could all be printed and distributed in, in thousands of copies. And that altered the, everything about the literature. Well, manuscript is something which is written usually on parchment, but later on paper, uh, by a scribe, um, uh, a, a trained, always a trained scribe because manuscripts are very expensive uh, and uh, then he would bring in uh, uh, what's called an illuminator, somebody who would uh, uh, provide the decoration and the pictures and so on. Here you have a couple of um, uh, really wonderful pages from this mid-15th century manuscript and here you have the crucifixion, here you have a lovely little picture of Christ ascending into heaven, and there are his legs um, sticking out from the clouds and the people gazing up in wonder. I've written quite a lot over the, uh, over the years now, I've been at it a long time. Um, I've written a, a book about uh, the idea of nationalism uh, as expressed in English literature in the Middle Ages. Um, I also do quite a lot of editing. Um, there's a, a very uh, well-known poem uh, called Piers Plowman, and um, I'm working with a team in America mainly to uh, produce electronic editions of this uh, of this work. In in, in recent months, um, I've been working particularly on the manuscripts which have been acquired by the University of Nottingham fairly recently. Uh, we managed to get a grant from the Arts and Humanities Research Council to study these manuscripts, which are particularly interesting because they all come from one place. They all come from just across the road from the University of Nottingham, uh, from Woolerton Hall and were all owned by the Willoughby family uh, from the Middle Ages onwards. So they form a family collection of manuscripts which is now housed at the University of Nottingham. What we've got here is the, the Woolerton Antiphonal, and an antiphonal is a book that was used by the choir in a church uh, to help them sing the, what, what are called the responses. It's a huge book, and in, um, it, it was put on a lectern and then the choir would stand round it and uh, they could all see it because it was so large. Now, th uh, these are just photographs because uh, the original is um, extremely valuable and also extremely uh, fragile. It, it um, uh, has suffered over the, uh, over the ages and is now being conserved and is, is uh, um, very difficult to handle. We're uh, first of all studying the manuscripts meticulously themselves, seeing how they're made up, seeing when they were written, um, uh, uh, w what their features are. But I'm particularly interested in their history, in how they came to be part of this Woolerton Hall, Woolerton Library collection, um, and what they tell us about the family, about the period, um, about medieval life and literature generally. As part of the decoration, you have some shields. There's one there, and there's another one there. And these shields belonged to a man called Sir Thomas Choworth, a Nottinghamshire man, who had this manuscript made for him. In isolation, it is a wonderful example of uh, late medieval art. Um, the, the pictures there are of very high quality, and um, the artists came from, not from London as you might expect, but from the East Midlands and from East Anglia, a group of uh, wonderful artists. But what is particularly interesting to me is the, is the history of the manuscript and why it came to Woolerton Church. It came to Woolerton Church um, uh, when the family, the Willoughby family, moved 
from Willoughby on the Worlds to Woolerton. They set up the church as their home base and um, Richard Willoughby um, uh, acquired this manuscript as a mark of uh, the prestige that he uh, required of his church. It's extraordinary, I think, that uh, the terms medieval and um, uh, the Middle Ages are used as terms of abuse. And so uh, you know, in a recent respected newspaper, you get a headline, uh, uh, women's pay is still in the Middle Ages. And you think, well, does that mean they were, they were paid in groats? What does it mean? Uh, but no, of course, it's just a term of abuse. And I think we abuse our own past at our peril. It's important that we know about our heritage, about our past, about society as it was 500, 1,000 years ago, because it is part of our own society. We have grown out of that society. We share many, um, many things with it, many attitudes are the same, but also very many are very different. And it's those differences and similarities which are important for us to understand, because by doing so, we understand about ourselves. We understand something about our society. Uh, that's how we learn, by stepping outside our society for a minute and um, just uh, uh, looking at it from uh, a position of some distance. I mean, there's always a problem with um, uh, what's called impact now, isn't there, with communicating uh, with people who are right outside the university and um, who will certainly not get direct benefit. Um, but I think um, the, the notion that universities um, pursue um, knowledge about society, about literature, about um, uh, life in the past, um, will eventually feed into our notion of ourselves as human beings. We discovered this a few years ago uh, in the uh, collection um, in the university library. It's just a single leaf, just one leaf, um, and it turned up in a box of watercolours. So we don't know anything about its context or where it came from or who made it. It's quite different from the Woolerton Antiphonal. What can it tell us? Well, it turns out the text is the life of somebody I'd never heard of at the time, the life of St Zeta. It's an English version of the life of St Zeta. St Zeta was um, a saint from Italy, from Lucca near Pisa in Italy. She was a a servant, and um, so she was a, a, a servant saint, and she was um, saint also of housekeepers. Very good if you lost your keys to the house, uh, you could pray to St. Zeta. The curious thing is that there were, was clearly a cult of St. Zeta in England, in eastern England, in East Midlands and in, uh, in East Anglia. And uh, the more one looks into this, the more one sees how strong this cult was. For example, at Nottingham Castle, there is an alabaster, um, an alabaster carving of St. Zita. And so you can connect this translation, um, which is the only fra remaining fragment of uh, the English life of St. Zita. We have no other copy of it except this one leaf. It must have come from a big book. You can connect that with a whole cult of um, uh, 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 the worship of a saint. And so I think that just illustrates how something so tiny, really, um, and so innocuous can uh, open up a, a whole world of uh, medieval life to us. Uh, there are people who um, think that the only thing of value is something that will make you live forever or earn a lot of money. Um, uh, that's what the notion of practical value is. Human beings are about much more than living forever and uh, um, getting rich. Um, if, if that's all we were about, then um, uh, we, we should certainly get rid of the arts and humanities altogether. But in fact, what makes us human uh, are, 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 is what the arts and humanities can provide, that understanding of ourselves um, and um, an appreciation of what it is to be human.